Mr. Chairman, over the past few weeks, we've seen thousands of Americans exercise their right to peacefully protest. And I applaud these individuals for spurring the important debate we're having today about police conduct. However, we're also seeing rioting, looting, and violence. This destructive and frankly despicable behavior led to the murder and the maiming of law enforcement officers, including David Patrick Underwood and David Dorn. What? And, these destruction, and the destruction of cities and the destruction of minority-owned businesses. Rioting and violence is not protected by the First Amendment. Those participating in such reprehensible actions should face the full force and extent of the law. One such group inciting violence in our communities is that of leftist extremist political movement, Antifa. Antifa has engaged in violent and threatening acts against American citizens, law enforcement officers, elected officials, and even our military service members. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to share just a few incidences of their violence and their threatening behavior. On 20 January 2017, that was the day after President Trump's inauguration, six police officers were injured and over 200 violent left-wing protesters were arrested on vandalism and assault charges. Protesters smashed storefront windows, they smashed bus stops, they hammered out windows of cars, and they launched rocks at the police. On November 8, 2018, Antifa activists threatened and vandalized Fox News commentator Tucker Carlson's residence. And I might add, they did this while Tucker Carlson's wife was in that house. On 10 January 2019, a leader of Antifa from Washington, D.C. was arrested and charged in connection with assaulting two U.S. service members in Philadelphia. On 31 May 2020, Three individuals associated with Antifa were arrested and accused of inciting riots and looting at a Target in Austin, Texas. There are additional examples, and there's additional accounts. I've included some of them in the actual text of my amendment, but for sake of brevity, I'll leave it with that. I think everybody here gets the idea. There can be no mistaking that Antifa is involved in the recent violence that we have seen following the murder of George Floyd. Attorney General uh, Bill Barr has even noted that the DOG has, and I quote, evidence that Antifa and other similar extremist groups, as well as actors of a variety of different political persuasions, have been involved in instigating and participating in violent activity, end quote. We cannot let groups who spew hatred who engage in violence and intimidation. We cannot let these groups control our communities through fear and undermine an important national dialogue. My amendment would require the FBI to study Antifa's tactics and operations, as well as whether Antifa should be labeled a domestic terrorist organization. This would also require, my amendment would also require a report to be provided to Congress on Antifa's terrorist activities. Mr. Chairman, I think this is just common sense. Frankly, I think this is just being pro-American. If you support peaceful protesters, and if you want to ensure violence does not drown out their voices, then you should vote for my amendment. If you support small business owners, those small business owners whose lives and livelihoods have been destroyed by looters, then you should vote for my amendment. In his remarks, my colleague, Mr. Cohen, my colleague from the great American city of Memphis, Tennessee, my colleague said, quote, we're all against the riots. Well, if you believe that violence, rioting, and looting is wrong, then you should vote for my amendment. If you believe that violence, rioting, and looting does not reflect the values of America, then you should vote for my amendment. I truly hope that we can all come together to protect our communities and speak with one voice against hatred and violence. 